Alright guys, welcome back. We are still chasing all of the fully powered celestial weapons. Or at least the six of seven that I plan on getting in this video. Uh, I just finished the league. So to get the Jupiter sigil, I had to go through a league again to get the status reels, a tournament to get the Orox reels, and then another league to get the uh, Jupiter sigil itself. And actually between the Orox reels and the uh, Jupiter sigil, I completely reset the Blitzball data I think four different times to make sure that it was the prize going through the season. I'm not a huge fan of, res of resetting it like that, but I didn't feel like playing 50-60 Blitzball games to, to get it there. I do love playing Blitzball, but I'm doing this with you know, a point in mind and an objective at the end, so it's a little bit different. And this game I am using Waka. I traditionally don't use Waka very often, so it's never been a priority either. So as you can see, I had quite a season. I, my uh, brother Waka and Sharby obviously are all on my team. They have 21 goals each, which means between the three of them they got 63 goals, which is a 6.3 goals per game average. I went to town on these guys. No other way to put it. So I'm pretty happy about that. That'd be why I'm showing that off right now. So, when you finish at number one, and it will always be a number one prize, you get the Jupiter Sigil. Choose player to expand tech list. really understand what this is doing right now. Okay, well this is kind of weird, but I'll bite and... So I won 9 of my 10 games as you can see, I actually threw the game against the, uh, I played the Albert Sykes in the last round, it's the game I just finished playing actually, because I wanted to keep all 3 of them at 21 win or 21 points, because I had no idea what tech find was, and to be completely honest with you, I thought it was going to be a lot better than that. Like, I guess it just, it's letting me, I, I can learn those techniques sooner? I don't know. Whatever. It's the first time I've ever actually won it as a prize, so. And actually, I'm just going to go back for a second. I want to see what the new season prizes are. Pure curiosity. Mega Elixir, Mega Phoenix, Power Sphere, Return Sphere. Nothing too good there. I mean, I could score a couple return spheres by being the top scorer again. But uh, that's about it. So, that's the Jupiter Sigil. What we are going to do today is arguably what might be one of the most boring videos you guys are going to have to watch. And it is the Cactor Hunting I am equipping no uh, no encounters. I'm pretty sure I've equipped it. Yeah. 
I did a very little bit of monster catching. I think it was on the Jose High Road. I had to, uh, I went to go get Caillou as a Blitzball player. And I was going to have him as a defender, but I didn't feel like going back to Luca to get Jamal. So I used, ended up using him as my goalie because he's got pretty good goal stats for the first, like, 15 levels or so. I think his catch was like 14 or 15 when we finished there, so. Definitely not bad by any means. Um, I'm gonna save just. Just cuz, basically. So, anyways, I had to. Uh, apparently, you can't actually get off at the Jose Temple in this game. So, like, off of the airship. So I had to run down the Jose High Road and I figured hopefully I'd run into some of those stupid birds that are incredibly hard to find. I only actually ran into one, it was a little disappointing. But I caught a few of the other enemies there. So what we have to do here, this is central, uh, we are going to, uh, basically we got to search for 10 characters. And uh, it's actually only 9 searches and it's really, when you think about it, only 8. And that'll get explained later. There's one pair of two and one ends up being right behind you. I'm pretty sure it's the last one. So basically I want to open the way to the village because the village has the sigil. And this is Riku's obviously. If you guys haven't gotten the crest already, it's just on the left side of this screen right now, the one that I'm now leaving. So you can kind of kill two birds with one stone here. Another thing too is I already mentioned monster catching. Uh, this is a great opportunity to get the, there's only six enemies here. There's one, two, well the sandworm only appears by itself, the zoo only appears by itself. And I'm actually blanking on what the third, or I guess it'd be what the third enemy is. And then you get the, uh, the drake guy, the bird guy, and the, uh, the wolf guy. I forget what those guys are actually called, but they always appear together. Oh, and the cactors, of course. So there we go. And once you open up the cactor village, you can fight a ton of cactors in there. But, like, actually in that little area, like, like as soon as you leave it, you get back to the extremely rare kind of thing they got going on there. So. You know, the nice thing about doing battles, again, I'm not going to because I'm recording and now that I have no encounters, I can just do any leveling stuff at the very end. I don't need to worry about... Uh, Sorry guys, I kind of stopped talking there, I was reading that. Take that. And I guess you can capture a lot of the captors this way too, actually. So 
this is the part that makes this semi-annoying, is after running all the way here, you now have to run all the way back to get your next clue. And unfortunately, they kind of copied this uh, side quest minigame, whatever you want to call it, in X2 as well. So at some point or another, because I will cover that game, I'm not going to do it right after I do this game. But when we do get around to that, I'm going to have to go hunting for all ten of these guys again. Which will end up being nine again, because one of them's a pair. Funny how that works. So for my next video, I'm just going to preface this right now. I feel like there's a lot of pressure for me to kind of talk and ramble on because there's not also not a whole lot else going on in this video. So that's what I'm going to do. As far as the next video goes, I'm going to go do a ton of monster catching. So much so that I get the 10 um, arena creations. So they can be area, species, or original creations. You need to get 10 of them to unlock the Mars Sigil. After I unlock the Mars Sigil, I'm going to then head to Makalania. Unless I do that first. I mean, I'll try the butterflies when I'm there, and we'll see what happens. But for the most part, I'm almost feeling like I'm going to have to do it uh, after. Rovi has gone for a walk. So the next video will contain basically you watching me get the Mars signal from the guy and then I'm going to tackle the uh, the Makalania butterfly challenge and from there, the video after that will probably be all about the Omega Ruins. Although to be fair, or to be honest with you guys, I'm not even sure how I'm going to tackle that video yet because I'm not strong enough yet to fight Omega. I do need more HP, but I don't want to split that into two videos. I think you get three trials at this. I can't remember if I've already said this in this video. I know I said it in the last one. Or at least I'm pretty sure I said it in the last one. But, uh... I don't really care for getting all ten of their named... named spheres here. I really don't. I think, I'm pretty sure the, uh, if you get 9 or 10 of them, it's, you get a friend sphere times 2, and beyond that, there's, the prizes are just healing items, like it might be a mega elixir, elixirs, potions, whatever, none of those really appeal to me, I mean, even the friend spheres are only useful until you know how to uh, do the AP grinding trick and then from there you don't even need those because you're just going to move yourself around the grid. So I think after the Omega Ruins video or videos I'll have to uh, 
do some training for a bit and then we'll be taking on the Dark Aeons because I mean really there won't be a whole lot left. Most of the side quests in the game revolve around you getting the Sigils. So we've already done the Remian Temple, we've already done the Bosch Temple, we've got all the Aeons. We've got all the weapons. attention deficit oh crap I'm going to abandon capturing this guy. So yeah, after the Dark Aeons, I'm not going to show you guys the boss fights for all the area creations. I might do a Nemesis fight, because you do get a trophy for defeating Nemesis. And if you can defeat the... Uh, sorry. If you can defeat Penance, you have a very good chance of defeating Nemesis. They're both very unique fights, so you kind of have to go into it knowing, like, obviously, st statistically, you have to, uh, you have to be at a pretty high level. You actually have to pretty much be maxed out, but, uh... You know, from being maxed out, you still have to go into it with the proper strategy, the proper equipment. I'm just realizing right now how poorly this could go if uh, they both get off 10,000 needles right now. Okay, they didn't.
So I actually forgot what I was talking about before I walked up to these two. Oh yeah, Nemesis. So, okay. This isn't gonna end well. Yeah, basically what I was saying though is that there's different strategies for both. So, just because you beat one doesn't mean you will beat the other, it just means that you're at a high enough level to get it done. There we go. So yeah, I probably will do a video on Nemesis. Again, more so because you get a trophy with them than anything else. So yeah, there's Nemesis, Penance, the Dark Aeons. And from there, that's kind of going to be uh, the end of the game. And unfortunately, like I'm at 45 hours right now. It's probably going to be about 90 by the time I can even get that stuff done. Uh, when I did my guide, I think I finished my total time was 122 hours. And obviously that's stopping to type as I'm going and this and that and I left it paused for a couple hours and apparently in this for whatever reason the timer keeps rolling when it's paused which is weird because in the regular version it stopped the clock like it should it's you know you pause the game but yeah it keeps counting like yeah it would have kept counting right there so yeah but I mean, that's still a good indicator. And I had never fought the Dark Aeons before, so I was going into it blind. It took me about three attempts to get a good armor to to fight them with, with the Auto Phoenix there. Which is kind of my favorite uh, hidden ability. That was pathetic. Ooh. This guy's a jerk. Okay, I got my first loser sphere. Probably gonna be loser spheres from here on out, not gonna lie guys. Speaking of my guide, in case any of you guys are wondering how I just happen to know where all of these little uh, these little characters are hanging out, I've actually opened up my guide right now and I'm looking at the uh, section from Riku's God Hand. Now, obviously you can just watch and see where I go here, but if you like the text version, check it out. Link should be in the description. I'm not gonna lie, I'm doing a little bit of cross advertising, but.
So we're at 25 minutes. I think I've spent about five of those with the blitz ball there. So this isn't actually turning out too long. I thought this was going to be like a video entire. Well, and it still will be because whenever I finish this, I'll just end the video. But I was thinking this was going to be like a 45 to 50 minute trek through the desert. I was thinking to myself, like, that's a long time to be doing this. So I'm pretty sure you can actually open those chests. Don't you run, needles! Take that! So I'm, actually I'm kind of thinking about how I'm going to do the Omega Ruins video and I think I will end up splitting it in two because the actual Omega fight should, uh, should take some time. And then there's the Ultima fight too. So what I'm thinking is I might actually walk into the Omega Ruins with no equip, no encounters on. So I'm confident enough that even, I mean, I'll go and power up all my celestial weapons at the end of the next video too, so that'll be part of that video as well, but, and for the record right now, just real time, you actually have to leave and come back to trigger this guy. If you don't leave, he won't uh, trigger. But anyways, back about the ruins there. Uh, Wow, that was a... Uh, pretty hard to do actually. I'm getting this guy. Oh, I moved too quick. Oh, he didn't catch me though. Oh, he caught me there. Oh, I got him too. Oh, the Crapers.
Okay, so this next one's ridiculous. It's going to involve us going back on the airship. So, which is always fun. Anywho, uh, so for the Omega Ruins, I'm going to run through it with no encounters. I'm going to fight Ultima because, as I was saying, I guess this is what I was getting at: is even with the uh, even without the Celestial Weapon, sorry, I'm pretty sure I could beat him at this point. Like even with just my capture weapons right now, with a uh, you know um, attack limit, I'm pretty sure I could get the job done. That being said, like I said, I'll go and power up. I should have six of the seven weapons, and you know what? It just takes a little bit of memory to get the butterfly challenge down. And if you don't, uh, I mean, obviously, if you if you're bad at it, you're bad at it. You know, I should have edited the Chocobo Racing one, but there are some times when I was writing my guide, it was about 15 minutes worth of Chaser Chocobo after I got the initial 0, zero to... Er... No, yeah, you have to beat her the first time, and then you can start racing for 0, zero. So after I beat her the first time and got the weapon itself, it took me about 15 minutes. When I did it while I was recording here, it took me about 45-50. I actually stopped recording, and I'm going to cut that entire section and just put the start the start of where I got it, right? But Anywho, if you're watching these in order, then this is kind of past tense because you would have already seen this. Nonetheless, it's the same idea for the butterfly challenge. It's one of those things that... It's hit or miss. Sometimes you get a little bit lucky with the way the butterflies are actually flying. But most of the time it's just about memorizing the trail because the trail doesn't really change ever. And actually the first time I did it because I'd never... Before I went to go and write my guide, I'd never actually done the Cactra challenge that we're doing now. I'd never done the Makalanya challenge. I still to this day have not done the lightning dodging. Like I had gotten Titus's Calibulg completely powered up because he's an essential character for me. And then it's always been between Yuna and because hers are super easy, you can get those without even thinking about it. Same thing with Orin's. You know, you if you're capturing things in the monster arena, you just kind of get it. And then uh, Waka's, like I said, I do like Blitz Ball, so I do come across it. I do come across it just kind of naturally the first few times. But I had never done the other three before, so the first time I did it, them. Well, first time I did this, actually, like the characters here, A, it sucked, because I didn't know where I was going for half of it. Now I do, so it's a lot uh, faster. And uh, B, the Makalanya challenge there, it's not that difficult the first time I tried it. I mean, not the first time, but it was the first game that I played through it, and... It didn't take a whole lot of uh, time. It took enough time, don't get me wrong, but... I actually... There's the south ones and then there's the north ones. Like, the two challenges there. I actually did the south one twice, thinking that you had to do that one twice to win the prize. And then I found out that you don't get anything for doing it again. So... I went up to the one that's north. Oh wow. Oh, in the north I should say. And uh... That one was a little bit harder but... Ooh. This is getting bad. Oh, 
don't know. Poor guy fell off. Still got a spear though. Getting back to where this all stemmed from is so the Omega Ruins. I'll do the first video will be me running through fighting Ultima because I won't encounter anything. Uh, we'll grab the 26th and final Albed Primer to get the gold trophy for that. And actually, this guy right here, Rin, will give us some. I think it's 99 Underdog Secret for getting all 26. And we'll get we'll get to that later too. But uh, what I'll end up doing then, because I'm going to need to train in the Omega Ruins, like that's just the way it's going to work, is to get strong enough to fight Omega himself, I'm going to need to do a lot of training still. So I'll be training in the Omega Ruins and monster catching at the same time, obviously. And uh, but what I'll do is the first time we go through there is I'll actually run through the bottom area too because there's two levels. So I'll run through the bottom area with no encounters. And actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, no I won't. Because I did this last time for my guide and I'm just remembering now that when I went through the second time it hadn't cleared the battles. Basically, there's about six or seven force battles that you have to do before you actually get to Omega. And if you leave the ruins before you actually go back, you won't be able to, uh, you'll have to fight them all over again. So now that I'm remembering that, I think... I think the Omega Ruins will be like two kind of half hour videos then. So I'll go up to the Ultima Weapon. We'll grab the uh, Albed Primer there. We'll open up the bottom area and then I'll kind of stop. And then I'll do my training. And then when I'm feeling like I'm good, we'll go through and. Uh, do the actual bottom area all the way to Omega himself. And then the Omega fight, and that should be about a 40 minute video in and of itself. So, and I'll keep no equips on, but uh, Oh, you don't get a needle time with this guy. But anyways, that way I just fight the forced fights. And then once we beat Omega, it'll be different. I was going to say correct me if I'm wrong guys, but obviously you can't, but uh, I was going to say I'm pretty sure I got all but one of the named, named spheres, sorry, just one of those, uh, just the guy who was underneath the save point there was the only one that I didn't get, so... So that was actually a really good run. 
which would be nice. I could use a few good runs. Like I said, I had a bad one with the chocobos there, so... Is the Mercury Sigil, and I believe this chest is your prize chest. So let's see what we get. Oh, Friends here. It's not even a Friends here times two. Well, that's lame. Oh well, I got a Friends here. Now I just need a friend. So I actually managed to get some levels while I was here, which is pretty exciting. Especially since I had no encounters on, but whatever. So pretty soon my entire party will know quick hit, and they will by the time I start fighting those other bosses there. Or at least two of the three will. I guess Walker won't because I burned. I don't know if you guys noticed that too. I uh, I had Walker using Mug. I used that other skill sphere I had. So I don't know if you can see, there's a guy. If you look at the post on my right, kind of right above in line with the top of the post there there's a guy standing there uh, he triggers the fight for Dark Bahamut or not Dark Bahamut for Dark Ifrit so if you want to go fight him right now in your own file you know where to find him I won't be getting there for a while so enjoy I actually should have pointed out the guy on the Thunder Plains that you uh, triggers a Dark Ixion fight as well, but oh well, I can't win them all. So in total, a 44 minute or 45 minute video. That's not bad. When I get back, I think it will be part 30 and we will tackle the last of the celestial weapon challenges and then we'll go and power them all up and you power them all up in the same place that you powered up the cloudy mirror into the celestial mirror so let's do a quick check right now i've got one two three and four so we'll go and get the saturn and mars ones in a bit and like i said i'm not gonna lie as much as I would love to give you guys what, you know, a quote 100% complete uh, playthrough. I don't have the patience to do the dodging, so it's going to be 100% minus that. But nonetheless, I will see you guys when we go through the next two challenges. And I guess it's just really the one challenge because I'll just kind of, it'll be like I did with this video. When I start the next video, you'll be looking at me getting the Mars Sigil. That's it. Because like I said, all you do is capture enough monsters to uh, have 10 creations created and he'll give it to you. And I'll give you guys a rundown of all the monster catching I do between now and then, because I am going to do quite a bit. But, we can get through all of that in the next video. So, I will see you guys then.